Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and today we'll be taking a look at one of Boyer's smallest mics, and actually possibly the smallest lav mic in the world. This is the BYWM3D. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video, we'll be taking a look at Boyer's latest miniature microphone. This is a wireless lav kit which is designed for use with Apple devices, Android devices, and also for your regular DLSR or mirrorless cameras, or essentially anything with a 3.5 mil jack. Now, the major selling point of this is its portability and its size. So as you can see, possibly if you're eagle-eyed, you'll notice I'm already wearing the transmitter on myself right now, and also on the camera, there is a receiver. So this is a wireless setup, so no more wires for me to stand on, which is, uh, how my Boya BYM1 just died literally today. So this is fantastic timing and a good reason for me to start doing the review on this. So I can actually look at the footage, see what it's like, and uh, then obviously answer the question of, is this actually worth the money? Now talking of money, at the moment in the UK, this retails for in and around the sort of 100 to 130 pounds mark. I will put some affiliated links in the video description so you can check it out for yourselves. But I think it's actually a really decent kit. Again, this is aimed at portability. It is extremely small. Now, Boyer do some fantastic other wireless mics, so if you want something a little bit bulkier, or maybe with longer battery life, then they certainly have options, which we've reviewed, which you can check out up here. And we've also got another one coming up very, very soon. But this is designed for people who just want a little bit of simplicity. They don't want a bulky microphone or a mic pack. Maybe you're doing yoga classes online or whatever it is, just trying to get your voice into your device without having a cord and with minimal fuss. So let's take a look at the packaging, see what the specs are like, and obviously you can already tell what the sound is like. I am going to deliberately try and leave the volume settings as they are, straight out of the camera. Now we're actually recording this on the Lumix G80, which is essentially the G85 around the rest of the world. I have got the microphone level set to 0 dB on the camera. It's a relatively good input on the Lumix camera, so it should do quite well. And on the actual lapel mic here, or the lavalier, I've actually got that set to the highest setting, although it is a little bit difficult to work out what the setting actually is because there's no visual feedback, which is another one of the benefits of some of the more expensive kits. So let's take a look at the packaging first of all. So as you can see, this is from Boya, and it's a 2.4 gigahertz wireless microphone set with um, essentially a receiver and a transmitter. And at the bottom there, you can see it's compatible with iPad, iPhone, digital cameras, DLSRs, all those things like GoPros, that kind of thing, and also Windows desktop PCs, or again, anything with a 3.5mm jack. On the side of the box, it gives me some details again, so 2.4 gigahertz transmitter, built-in microphone, USB Type-C power supply, so the actual unit itself is charged from a USB Type-C, which is always good to see now. Also, it comes with its own storage and carrying case, and also is a charging case, and it gives you some idea of the length of the battery life. Now, the battery life is always gonna be one of those things which is gonna be a little bit hit or miss, depending on, obviously, your volumes, your ambient surroundings, and that kind of stuff. Generally, they say that the actual receiver will last considerably longer, so around about eight hours, and the transmitter around about 4.8 hours. But again, your mileage may vary. On the back of the box goes into detail about what you actually get in the kit, but we'll have a close-up of that on the screen, but we certainly will be going through those items straight away. So inside the kit, as you can see, this is a pretty nice looking little deal here. So you get your usual bits and pieces from Boya. You get your certificate of authenticity, a couple of stickers as well, which you can feel free to use. There's a warranty card, a little bit of information about how the device works, and also a detailed instruction manual. Also included in this particular one, now there are a couple of models that's available. There's one which is more tailored towards USB Type-C. There's one that's tailored towards the iPhone. You can choose whichever model. Boya kindly have actually sent me the USB Type-C adapter as well, which doesn't actually come as part of this particular kit. This is the iPhone orientated or lightning orientated kit. So thank you very much Boya for sending that so I can test it out on some Android devices also. We also have a uh, little accessories box here and this is the first time I've opened this so I'm not entirely sure what is gonna be in here. So there is a wind muff, so this can go on to the transmitter. So if you're out and about and it's particularly windy, then you can use that. I've currently got mine set up at the moment with just a pop shield on there because we're indoors, so there's no wind. We will be going outside later on and giving this a test to see what it's actually like yeah, defending against wind. And also there is a USB Type-C cable. So this again is for charging the microphones. Now the microphones themselves are actually charged in a very, very cool way. This is essentially very much like AirPods and those kind of wireless devices. 
So you've got this uh, charging case here, which as you can see, nice tough plastic, and on the back there is the USB Type-C connection, so literally just plug in your USB Type-C in the back there, plug that into a USB outlet, and it will start charging. On the front there's some LEDs, so I can tell you what the status is, so at the moment one of the uh, units is actually charging as we speak. When this is plugged into a main source, then the lights will go up. There's four LEDs on there, obviously fourth LED, when it goes out it's fully charged, otherwise when it's flashing it means it's charging. When it's not connected to the mains, then it will start charging the actual re receiver and also the transmitter as it is currently. To open it, all you need to do is press the button on the front there and that releases the lid. And you can see inside there is all of your kit. So this is really, really handy. You can take this out, put it into a pocket or something. It's not particularly big. Put it in your pocket and it's handy. Then you can start recording. So say for instance, you wanna get a slightly longer distance shot and someone's holding your phone or camera or whatever and you want to get a bit of distance between you, you can use this as a wireless microphone. And even if you're doing up close shots, the sound is going to be considerably better than the built-in microphones on the iPhone. Although they are quite good, this is clearly going to be better because it's going to give you some isolation and also some rejection of other noises. And being closer to your mouth, it's going to pick up your speech particularly well. So looking inside the kit, so we have the two modules themselves. So this is the first one. This is the receiver. So the receiver is, uh, again, very, very small. There's very limited buttons on here. Literally, there is a power button on the side there, and these are actually self-pairing. So when you take them out, they actually pair to each other. If for some reason, if anything goes wrong, you can put them both back in the charging area, and there is a button here, which is called pair, and you can basically press and hold that, and it will reset the system and repair them should anything go wrong. So that is the receiver. Now the receiver works in conjunction with any of these additional items here. So depending on what you're actually connecting to, you can connect up a different device. And this is very similar to the DJI uh, camera that we reviewed. So literally all you do is get one of these and slide it in the side, locks into place, and there it is. So that is with the standard 3.5 mil TRS jack. So then you can plug that into the side of your device and essentially it's ready to go. If you wanted to plug it into a iPhone, for example, then you just swap that out with the iPhone compatible one that just slots in and then you can plug the lightning style connector into your iPad, iPhone, etc, etc. So again, really cool. The power button on the side, you can press and hold it to turn it off or you can press it once to actually mute it, all that kind of stuff. So that is the uh, receiver. Let's take a look at the transmitter. So this is the transmitter, as you can see. Very, very small and smaller than a, uh, a lighter, about the same size as a small AA battery and actually considerably lighter as well, so you barely know you actually got it. On the top, you've got the holes for the microphone itself, so there is gonna be some amount of kind of uh, rejection of other noises, so it is gonna be slightly directional. Also as well, there is a little clip on there, so you can clip it onto your clothes. You've got the charging points on the back, which meet up with the points actually in the case itself. On the bottom, there's a QR code, and on the side, we've got a volume rocker. So the volume can be raised or lowered accordingly, Chances are I think you'll probably have to raise it because the, uh, the mic levels do seem a little bit on the low side, at least from what I'm seeing from the analyzer actually on the camera currently. Also as well, on the front, quite discreetly, is a little power button. So you can, again, you can press and hold that, or you can just press it once and that acts as a mute button. So when it's muted, you get a flashing light on there, say it's muted, flashing red, blue when it's working, as you can probably see from this one here, just checking you see it actually in the camera. So a blue LED means it's working. If I wanted to maybe uh, go to the toilet or something, you can press this button. And there we go. So whilst the button's pressed, you don't get any audio come through. So again, if you wanna save some battery level or maybe you wanna to go to the toilet or have a private discussion, then you can certainly go ahead and do that. So that essentially is it. That is the kit in its contents. The real test of this is going to be what it actually sounds like, so I'm going to have to review back this footage. Also as well, I'm going to go and take my iPhone out into the garden, possibly even this camera as well, see what it's like under wind conditions, but let me know what you think of the sound quality so far. Okay, so here we are, we're outside and we're using the iPhone mic, and as you can see I've got my windshield on, and I'll be quite nice so you can see what the noise floor is like. Hopefully you can hear the wildlife. There's uh, quite a lot of it going on today. So I'm gonna go for a walk down towards the garden end and hopefully we'll uh, maintain reception. So let's see. So that is about two meters away. So three, five. 
six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that is roughly about 10 meters away, possibly slightly more. Uh, hopefully the uh, audio is coming through nice and clearly and uh, let's go a little bit further. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So this is about 20 meters away. Uh, I wonder if the post makes any difference. It shouldn't do, but there you go. Uh, I'm not sure if you can actually even see me on the screen anymore. So I'll quickly go to the very end of the garden. So this is right at the very end of the garden. Hopefully you're still getting some audio coming through. Uh, there are some obstacles here. So let's move around and see what that's like. Again, this is just a sound test. Hopefully it sounds uh, pretty good. So even though it's sunny today, it's a little bit on the chilly side. So I'll zip up my hoodie a little bit. And uh, yeah, okay. hopefully the uh, audio's come through. No oh, dead bird. Uh, hopefully the audio's coming through pretty good and hopefully you can hear what it's like and uh, yeah, hopefully it sounds pretty good. So I'm gonna go and review this footage, see what it's actually like. Oh, there's a terrible echo here. Let's see what the uh, footage is like, see what the audio's like, and then we'll come back with my final thoughts. Okay, so we've done a little bit of testing and uh, hopefully you've seen the footage already. There are some definite issues with this particular set. Um, I don't know whether it's the Bluetooth version they're using or whether it's because it's relatively low power. There is constantly, and um, we get it with a lot of devices, especially with iPhones, is where it actually records and it's slightly out of sync. Now this is most noticeable on iPhones or iPads when using, I think it's like the HEIC codec. And basically because it tries to compress the audio and the video so much, for some reason it does seem to put it out of sync. Now it plays back absolutely fine when you're watching it on an iPhone, but as soon as you take the footage off of the iPhone and then put it onto a PC or watch it on another device, automatically, for some reason, the way that it decodes the codecs, it puts the audio out of sync. Now there is actually, even when we're recording directly into the camera, a very minute sync issue with the audio and also the visuals, which possibly you may have already noticed. Most of you, probably never even batted an eyelid, never noticed it at all until I actually said it. And now, as you're listening to the sound, watching my lips, you're probably noticing, yeah, it is fractionally out, and it certainly is. Obviously, it's one of those things you can quite easily uh, get rid of in post-production, but if you're using this in some form of live streaming type setup, then that may be a slight issue to you. Now, if it is a slight issue, then obviously there are options available, certainly like the, uh, the BYBM6S, which we've used before, which is, absolutely brilliant it lacks some of the uh, connectivity to other devices and certainly is a lot more bulky slightly more pricey as well but if you want the simplicity and the ease of use and also the kind of miniaturization of the whole setup then i think this actually works out really well as long as you're prepared to put up with those minor quirks now another minor quirk which again could be down to the version of bluetooth that it's using i noticed it more so in this particular environment so if you're in a more uh, electronically congested environment where there's lots of Wi-Fi, uh, audio signals, all that kind of stuff just floating around the room. It does seem to pick up a little bit of interference, which again, you possibly will have noticed there is a, a certain noise floor to this device. When we did the outside footage, which I'll play again now, we're using the iPhone mic and as you can see, I've got my windshield on and I'll be quite nice so you can see what the noise floor is like. Hopefully you can hear the wildlife. There's uh, quite a lot of it going on today. So I'm gonna go for a walk down towards the garden end. You will have probably noticed that the noise floor was very, very minimal. Uh, again, I guess that is down to interference. Certainly in here, I've got Wi-Fi and Bluetooth behind me. I've got Wi-Fi and Bluetooth pretty much everywhere. I've got studio lamps, I've got Alexa devices, Amazon devices, all that kind of stuff. We are completely smogged in with Wi-Fi and kind of different bandwidths going around us. So certainly, if that is also going to be a factor in your recordings, then do take that into consideration. But I think for most people, if you're using this with uh, what it's intended to, ideally a mobile phone, out somewhere, just getting some really nice footage and get some nice crispy audio. I think you'll agree, the audio is absolutely brilliant. And even when I was right at the end of the garden, it still came through very clearly. I did notice there was a very, very brief dropout as I went past the, uh, the washing line post, which is metal. So potentially that might have interfered with it. It could have been just one of those things. I was facing away from the microphone uh, and also the transmitter. So my kind of body was blocking it. So potentially that could be an issue as well. So yes, there are certainly some limitations to this particular setup, but conversely, there are also so many cool, cool factors such as obviously portability, 
reliability in terms of having a battery ready to go. This is actually a battery bank as well, so it will charge both devices a couple of times before the battery is flat. So if you want to use it for a couple of hours where you're walking down a beach or something, and then put it on charge while you're having your lunch, then maybe do some recording walking back up. That is what I think is the ideal scenario for this type of mic. Casual vlogging, that kind of stuff, where you're just out and about, out in the open, limited on what your interference is, I think for a studio environment, I would certainly uh, go for possibly something like this or just a wired lav mic if you want to get rid of interference entirely and also to reduce the noise floor. Inherently with all wireless devices, there is a very, very minute noise floor, which is obviously evident in this recording. So anyway, this has been the Boya BY WM3D. Again, there will be affiliate links in the video description below. Also, big thanks to Boya for uh, helping support the channel and sending these, these items to review all the time. Uh, it really is amazing. I love the stuff that they send. And they don't ask us to say anything or to report back or anything. They just say, tell all the people what you think. And certainly we have done. So definitely some pros, definitely a couple of cons. Do make up your decision based on your use case scenario. This isn't a one for all but this is suited for certain types of activities, more so than studio-based activities. So anyway, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.